Welcome to the Bluest Life demo. Today, we'll be meeting with Vision Corp, a mid-sized enterprise that was a small startup five years ago. The founders have since moved on, and as the company is growing up, they have a need to standardize and formalize the business processes. The new CEO is ready to take up the challenge and instructs his team to start a process improvement campaign. The team enthusiastically starts to work, but soon run into several hurdles. The processes are more numerous and complex than they imagined. The team is spread out all over the country, can't keep up with process changes, and having a hard time keeping already documented processes up to date. That's where Mike comes in. He's a senior business analyst in Sydney. He's been with the company for a long time. Uh, but in a previous life, he used Bluebox Life to great, great success. He used that to document all of the processes. So he talks to Rachel and Bill, and they agree to collaborate with Mike. The team then creates a list of business requirements to indicate what they need from the tool. And it's a tool that's easy to use by everyone, not just a small team of experts. It's able to produce diagrams that adhere to the BPM notation standard. It must have significant collaboration features, act as a single source of truth, and have strong government capabilities for process approvals. So let's take a look at the tool. You can see Bluish Life here running in two windows. Mike is logged in on the left and Bill is logged in on the right. Now we're going to be creating a new space for our team. So let's give it a name first. We then afterwards fill in some of the space details and the goals that we'd like to achieve with this space. So you can add as many goals as you want, and you can see also the activity stream of what actually has happened over the past few days into our space. Now we then can create a subspace or a blueprint, a process app, a policy, or a business decision. In this case, we'll be creating a new process blueprint. We will then end up into the discovery view of our process. I like to call it the sticky notes view. Now, as I want to collaborate, Mike is now asking Bill for help as he's a supply chain expert in charge of fulfillment. We have a quick chat and Bill clicks on the link that Mike has sent him that will take him directly to the same page that Mike is on. Mike and Bill are now viewing the same process map and they can start collaborating. First, Mike adds in the major milestones that exist in the process. And underneath there, he adds the activities that are taking place within each milestone. Mike proceeds to fill in some of the activities and he's asking you know, Bill for help because he doesn't know all the activities that are taking place inside the fulfillment milestone. Mike fills in initially his first activities around the order processing, such as process form, validate the order items, and then he switches over to Bill. Bill then proceeds to fill in the fulfillment activities such as checking stock levels, putting the order onto the picking list, and putting the order to the shipping manifest. As Bill fills in the details, Mike can see all the updates in real time. As the fulfillment milestone has been completed, then Mike can proceed to fill in activities for the billing milestone. So he adds in a few activities underneath there. Now you can add and remove the activities at will or drag and drop around onto the screen. Each party will see all the updates in real time. Now Mike will then also proceed to add some property details to the activities, such as the participants, as well as the systems involved inside the activities. He does that for the second activity as well. You can see that the system pre-fills the screen with some of the prior data that has been entered into the system. Now the two of them are proceeding with filling out the rest of the activities as well as some of the, of the other properties. What is important to understand is that the properties can be turned on or off. There's a few defaults that come out of the box, but you can also add your own properties. And all of those properties that you add yourself are immediately visible as well inside the analysis phase, which we're gonna move on a little bit later down the track. Now the two of them are quite happy with their view. And now Bill decides to change the discovery map to a workflow view. Now over here, they can see the process laid out 
into a visual flow map where each of those participants have their own swim lane. You can move things around onto the map and you can also add, of course, your decision point. You can add new activities to it. You can switch back and forward between the two views at will. Now here we can see that Bill also proceeds to add more activities to his fulfillment phase, such as sending a notification and updating the, the order status. You can convert any of more intricate steps to a sub process. And this is just to make sure you, you know, retain space. So you can easily expand and minimize a series of sub processes inside this particular diagram. Um, you can change the color of that particular sub process. Right? What's important to understand is that the sub process is embedded inside this process diagram. If you want to have a reusable sub process, you might better be better off to use a linked sub process instead of an embedded sub process. Now the two of them continue to collaborate onto this diagram to make sure it reflects the real situation that exists inside the organization. Now, there's a couple of activities that haven't been assigned to anyone. We can then bulk assign them by simply changing the name of that particular swim lane. And if we want to move somebody to a different role, we can simply drag and drop the activity to a different swim lane. So as you can see, the two of them, especially you know, when people are working in remote offices, can immediately see all of the changes reflected onto their respective screen. Mike and Bill are now finished with the process maps. And Mike now wants to discuss the results with the financial department. Mike therefore shares his process diagram with Rachel and he switches to the analysis view. As part of the analysis view, you can turn on or turn off certain properties, also the properties that you've designed yourself. So here we can see the process overlaid with financial properties such as internal cost, work time, and wait time. We can also play back through the actual process diagram by clicking on the playback button. This allows us to discuss the possible scenarios that can flow through the process diagram. In this case, we're looking at the happy part, which activities are involved there. We can also decide well, which activities are involved in an escalation path, such as an insufficient stock scenario. Now, as we go and look through the playback scenarios, we can also focus on the properties again. We can look at work time, and in this case, if we play back through it, we can see the values for work time be accumulated as we flow through the process. The whole point of this playback and analysis view is to discuss the process with, with the relevant stakeholders. We can zoom in on certain features, we can look at certain attributes of the process, and we can validate the flow of the process with the appropriate teams in our organization. Once we have finished discussing the process with the finance team, we are now ready to put it into an approval flow. First, we create a snapshot, and the snapshot is just a version of the process that we can always you know, resort back to. But in this case, we also want to use a snapshot and say, hey, this is a snapshot that is ready for approval. So before we publish it, we then launch a process app. So process app is a predefined workflow template that we can use to say, who are the people involved in the approval flow? Now we launched the process uh, application right now. And as we can see, when we switch to our work tab, we can see the actual new work item appearing into our work list. At the same time, we also get a notification into our email box that we have set up that also indicates a new task activity that we have to work on. So you can use it to ping people to provide regular updates and commentary to the state of the process. You might want to say, hey, please review this process in six months time. We hope you've enjoyed this short presentation of Blowworks Live and understand how it can help you document, analyze, manage, and improve your business processes. Feel free to sign up for a 30-day trial at blowerslive.com. Thank you for your time.